Hello everyone, how is each and every one of you doing? I'm hoping that all of you are doing great and you're having a wonderful time. I am also a fine and doing great. So thank you and a very, very warm welcome to another episode. So they usually say that when you dig a hole for someone, you might be the first one to fall into that hole. And from what Harry and Meghan told us, it seems like the royal family in collaboration with the UK media tried by, tried by all means to bring Harry and Meghan down. And even to this day, they still target Harry and Meghan's source of living. They still target Harry and Meghan's marriage in the hopes that Harry and Meghan are going to fail. But really, who's failing? Because from where I stand, I see as though the members of the royal family are the ones who are falling. They are the ones who are failing. And the Telegraph even had this headline saying that the Sussexes left a hole which has just been mercilessly exposed. It hasn't even been one week since the news about Kate's illness and Charles' illness hit the media. But still, the UK media found their way around it and still made Harry and Meghan the center of attention. You remember how they were whining, they were whining about how Harry and Meghan need to call Charles and Kate, need to know how Charles and Kate are doing. I don't know, Harry and Meghan should come back to uh, help with the duties, something like that. You remember the UK media saying that, right? All I keep hearing is how Harry and Meghan should do this, how Harry and Meghan should do that. But none of these people can simply come and say with their whole chest that, wow, we were wrong. We actually should have treated Harry and Meghan better and we wish they would come back. I think that would be too direct, too humble, too psychologically healthy. Instead, these people twist themselves in knots to create a tangled web of rage, envy and regret with lots of attempts to shame Harry and Meghan for not hanging around for just this kind of emergency. But then again, coming to think of it, these people have Camilla, they have Sophie, they have Mike Tyndall and Prince Andrew, whom they adore very much, give them all ribbon cutting classes and the problem is solved. And stop wishing that Harry and Meghan were still there with them. These people had a really good chance at accepting Harry's half-in, half-out offer. Harry offered the half-in, half-out solution whereby he and his wife could work part-time for the royal family in such uh, when such emergencies occur and then they could still live their lives in the U.S. But what did, what did the royal family say? They didn't want Harry's offer. They didn't want it because they were so full of jealousy. All they thought at that time is how Meghan and Harry were going to overshadow the other royals. So they wanted Harry and Meghan to still go far away in the US and they thought they could do all this by themselves. And now look, Harry and Meghan are still outshining these royals even effortlessly because the media can't seem to shut up about Harry and Meghan. And then these royals, obviously, you can see how they're failing at their job. So here is a piece from the Telegraph. So they wrote a part about how Harry and Meghan are happy. And here is how they wrote it. The gulf between the two families has never seemed wider. On one side of the Atlantic, a royal family which could have done with a bit of luck after a rough few years, but has instead seen three of its key members put out of action. On the other, the freedom-seeking Sussexes seemingly living their best lives. The comparison is stuck and to royal watchers irresistible. How different it could have all been. You see, the only people who are still asking how different it could have all been is the royal family and the media. But the likes of Robert Jobson 
are still there trying to insist how Harry must be thinking right now how different it could all have been. But I'm sure that Harry is so happy with his life because that is something that Harry wanted since a very young age. He just wanted to leave the UK. And I'm just glad that for once they are seeing the reality of how Harry and Meghan are succeeding on the other side while the royals on this other side of the Atlantic are just crumbling. And then another part they were talking about how the Sussexes are never coming back. They wrote that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have gone with no wish to come back. They have expressed no regret about their decision to pursue financial freedom in California. The idea of playing an eternal supporting role in the royal family was one of their frustrations. At least they are also acknowledging the fact that Harry and Meghan have no wish to come back to the UK and that they have expressed no regret about their decision to pursue financial freedom in California. That is very true. And then in another part, they're talking about how the royal family has no support. And here is what they wrote. Now, with the king preparing for an imminent operation and Prince William at his wife's bedside, bedside as she heals from surgery to her abdomen, the lack of practical royal support around them is palpable. The king's siblings, Princess Anne and Prince Edward and his wife Sophie are already working with packed diaries. The generation above, the late queen's cousin, can no longer be expected to pick up the slack. The York sisters are no longer working royals. The Tyndalls have no desire to be. The departure of the Sussexes has left a hole which has now been mercilessly exposed. But really, can we blame Harry and Meghan for leaving? The only person who should be blaming themselves right now, the only people who should be blaming themselves right now are these members of the royal family. If they had not treated Harry and Meghan the way they did, if they just at least spoke a word against the treatment of Meghan by the UK press and even by some of their own members, maybe it would have been so different. Maybe right now they would not be facing all these challenges. But I'm believing that maybe they are being punished for the treatment of Harry and Meghan. And then there's also another part talking about how Phil Dunphier thinks that Harry and Meghan could have eased the pressure of William and Kate. But the time for regrets is far gone now. These people made that decision. They chose not to uh, protect Harry and Meghan and their children. And also Harry and Meghan chose to leave. So if they're having any regrets at this point in time, they have no one else to blame but themselves. If Harry and Meghan were, as it now seems, the linchpin of the whole operation, and vital to the success of the royal family, then they should have been treated as such this whole time. When Harry offered the half-in, half-out situation in which he and Meghan could have temporarily returned to the UK in exactly this kind of situ situation, he was mocked, abused, trashed, denigrated and smeared for simply wanting the attacks on his wife to end and for prioritizing his mental health. So honestly, I don't care. I can't care less about what the royal family is going through right now. I don't care if they don't have people to work for them because there are the likes of Andrew, Sophie and the rest. They should just leave Harry and Meghan alone. That is just what I'm going to say for today. Kindly let me know your opinions concerning this and I'll see you all on the next podcast. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.